Yo, so guys, welcome back to another video. This is another um, United Tree reaction on another sports video. And this one is this week's sport, this week in sports ball 2021 AFC free agency edition. And yeah, man, I mean, I don't know, I don't know, like, because I know it's now the tr um, it's now the off season and it's like trades happening and all this kind of stuff. And I know, um, I remember from my reaction that I did on the Browns recently, and I asked the question how they've been doing in the off season and like, what trades they've been doing. And they've been making some really good moves. And I think I saw like yesterday, they traded I forgot who it was but like they just stacked up now and I mean that answers my question even more how much longer is the off season for like how much longer is there to like make these trades etc I'm what just curious basically but yeah man I don't know what really to expect because I've not really seen a lot of these and some of these players I may not be like fully up to date with as for like I, I've when, with with most sports really I only really know the big name players about like how good they are with like the sort of the good players, but not the well, known, like necessarily well known names. I'm not like necessarily knowing whether they're like the best players or what, but I'm just sort of just gonna see this, and I hope he explains it to me to a level where I understand how well teams have been doing on the off season. But yeah, man, let's just get into this. Hopefully, going to enjoy. Quick shout out to my Instagram, my Twitter, links in the description for those. And yeah, let's just let's just give us a watch, man. Let's see what what tree has for us today. Oh, there's a guard. Despite the world falling apart around them last Is that a new intro? For sports ball. Year, the NFL bull rushed through it with success. Which is relatively unsurprising to me, but still admirable. However, it didn't come without some short-term scars that need to heal. This oh, means man. teams in deep cap hell looking at you, Saints and Eagles, are in for even more acrobatics to perform. This is gonna sound nowhere bad. near all bad. But like all sports have like like lost money in terms of how much they can play players or how much example for soccer how much you can buy a player for but like i feel like it's obviously a lot of bad for it obviously a lot of bad and that outweighs the good but i feel like in certain ways because player wages were just getting higher and higher and i feel like it was just going to reach a point where they're just getting paid i mean if they're not already just getting paid like extortion amounts where you just sort of like how and it just it just sort of maybe maybe sports sort of needed this reshuffle in the financials Again, I don't want any sports to go under. I don't want any teams to go under, like, to have to quit or whatever. That would be the worst. But just in terms of, like, maybe slowing it down a little bit and actually bringing it back, maybe it's just sort of what sport needed. I don't really know if, if anyone sort of sees my point there. I just sort of feel like you've got to try and look at some positives in terms of the, um, instead of the negatives. But, yeah, it's still, it still sucks. I hope there's no teams at risk of, like, 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 um, what's the word folding or quitting or whatever because of financials but let me know if there is like any sports teams that are sort of at risk of that that would be something that I'd be interested in, interested to know about. the shield however new television contracts have been negotiated the 100 billion let the league over 10 billion dollars per year on these alone Amazon will be getting exclusive rights to Thursday night football starting in 2023 which is a huge step for internet streaming that's no crazy. other major change Prime have been doing that with a lot of sports, haven't they? They've really taken over the game, man. I'm happy because it's cheap. It's so cheap. And Prime is just... Bro, Amazon and Prime, man, it's just the best. Because ABC now gets the right to flex games for Monday Night Football. Getting exclusive rights to Thursday Night Football starting in 2023, which is a huge step for internet streaming. No other major changes, but ABC now gets... Oh, ABC. The right to flex games for Monday Night Football. Only if they could flex broadcasting crews for those games. Meanwhile, free agency is still underway for the league. How's the AFC holding out? Buffalo and Miami are two of the up-and-coming teams in the AFC. Both squads had excellent seasons from their perspective and are looking to shore up weaknesses this offseason. Buffalo didn't have much wiggle room to work with, but they did have a few depth signings. Matt Milano is back in the fold on a respectable contract for the defense. They tried for Gronk, but they were scorned since he'd rather crush Lombardi trophies oh, than shit, tables. Like Gronk, but... Although Emmanuel Sanders being signed is pretty solid for their receiving core, Wait, hold on a second. Josh Allen is probably going to be gone soon. And we all know why. Mitch Trubisky is now a bill. Can't just let the MVP ride the bench. Come on. The Dolphins had more of an overhaul. Kyle Van Noy wasn't a good fit for the Dolphins scheme and was released into the wild. To replace him, Bernardrick McKinney free from Houston for Shaq Lawson. There are some depth signings like Jacoby Brissett, Justin Coleman, Matt Skura for the offensive line, and Seathan Carter. But the true prize is a new weapon for Tua. Will Fuller. He's a streaky player, but when he's on, he's a true deep threat. Alongside a healthy Devontae Parker, this should help out the passing attack greatly. I still don't know if it's going to be Tua under center next year, though. Those Deshaun Watson rumors are still flying around. 
Are they really, though? That third overall pick is still up in the air, but the Dolphins have chosen the art of finesse. The San Francisco 49ers came a calling, and the offer they gave was too good to pass up. The 12th overall pick, a third this year. Trading number three overall pick. San Francisco 49ers for the number 12 pick. and two future firsts in 2022 and 2023. That is a premium haul to give up for San Fran. And it kind of smells desperate. They're picking quarterback with this pick, right? But wait, there's more. The Dolphins then flip the 12th overall pick in the 2022 first to move up to the 6th overall pick. So the Dolphins only drop three positions and get extra first and third round picks to play with in the future. They're also still in line for an elite talent at a position of need if they so desire. Making quality moves, good shit, Miami. Good shit. Bill Belichick stews in a film room somewhere in Foxborough. His ex that scorned him for a sexier love down south has experienced great success without him. The narratives are starting to form. Brady made Belichick. The hoodie was nothing without his elite quarterback. The time has come for a revival. He needs the world to know that the Patriots don't lie down to die. They have a shitload of cap space to play with, and they will invest in mercenaries to rebuild their empire. <laughs> As two tight ends set did wonders for New England in the past, <laughs> they will revive it by signing two of the best on the market in Janu Smith and Hunter Henry. The wide oh, wow. receiving core infused with under-the-radar signings in Kendrick Bourne and Nelson Aguilar. Trent Brown and David Andrews back for the offensive line. Devon God showed Jalen Mills and Matthew Judon to revive a sluggish defensive core. Remember, they also have Dante Hightower coming back as well. Same goes for Kyle Van Noy returning to the land that made him great. All of this results in New England giving out the most guaranteed money in their team's history. Belichick wants vengeance. They're really like going for them. I mean, fair enough, they had a pr pretty stinky season last year, so it, I guess it's just to make up for lost time in a sense. And I don't think he's done. Cam Newton is surprisingly back, but I doubt it'll be the only option for him to choose from. I'm interested to see what they do in the next month or so. I love this clip so The New York Jets and investing in free agency. Is there a more consistent combination in this world we can see? The Jets. The last few classes have been underwhelming at best, and they seem to be at a crossroads. As we wait to see what happens with Sam Darnold, the Jets brought in more weapons around the field. At wideout, Corey Davis. He was excess goods in Tennessee, but he is still formidable and should be a good foil to Denzel Mims. For defense, refortifications to replace those traded away last year. Jared Davis, Carl Lawson, and Sheldon Rankins. All starting caliber players all brought in to hopefully turn the tide. On paper, it looks like a decent offseason, but the question is how it's executed on the field. Both will want to one-up each other in the market. Baltimore did lose a big piece in Matthew Judon, but they managed to keep Tyus Bowser and Derek Wolfe for the defense. On offense, only a piece for the offensive line in Kevin Zeitler, who should do a good job here. They still need wideouts, though. Are you in the hunt for anyone yet? Sammy Watkins? Eh. The Browns fortunately don't, but they poached a few solid pieces from the Rams for the defense in John Johnson and Troy Hill. These are some good... Again, this is probably a little bit outdated as well because this is a few weeks back and there's obviously been more moves since and more trades, etc. Especially for the Browns, for example, like I was just talking about. But um, I, I, this is just sort of to sort of recap myself. I guess he's going to do another one as the, tr the free agency like sort of season's over and the league returns. Signing kind of so and should hoping. do quality work for the emerging defense. There's even attack McKinley brought in as a speculative investment, so more depth to choose from. They both haven't done much, but they kind of didn't need to. The battles, however, will continue on in this coming season. Cincinnati, on the other hand, has been struggling to find a true identity since, Bungles, well, that day. More of that core is now gone as well, so enjoy that pain. <laughs> they can even feel it. To replace Carl Lawson, they brought in Trey Hendrickson, who had an outstanding season. But how much of that was being flanked by Cameron Jordan? At corner edge, Shadobi Awuzie and Mike Hilton, who are nice signings, but health is a concern for Awuzie. Although I must ask, wasn't the big issue offensive line? At least they addressed it somewhat by signing Riley Reef and cutting Bobby Hart. I still think they should- Fuck me, I thought you said Riley Reed for a second. I was like, wait, what? should do more there to protect Burrow, though. <laughs> There's enough pain in Cincy not to deal with him being hurt again. Why is Mike Brown still alive? The Steelers don't tank. They don't give oh, a shit about their embarrassing mine. playoff loss to Cleveland and believe they still have the core to make a deep run. Losing a good chunk of talent hurts on both sides of the ball, but the answer isn't who they brought back. Juju Smith-Schuster tried the market out, but couldn't get a long-term deal. Why learn a new playbook for a slightly larger contract when you know what you're getting in Pittsburgh? Oh, wow. The question, though, was at QB. Ben Roethlisberger has declined significantly. 
and his longtime center and Marquise Pouncey has retired from duty. The team is shedding talent due to a cap crunch. And shutdown corner Steven Nelson also wants out. The time was right to bow out from his long reign, especially at his impending cap hit. But the Steelers are loyal to a fault and don't have a legit option to replace him. As we all know, Ben isn't a fan of the word no. Nope, fuck you, Logic! I'm coming back for another year, baby! I'm still standing, motherfuckers! Let me feast on your fucking tears! Fuck it! Ah, uh, Houston, I see you're still a total... I'm assuming he was saying he was going to leave or he's going to retire or whatever, and then they've just sort of pretended that that was never going to happen, that he always wanted to keep my cons After the organization went over his head for the GM hire, he has had enough. Despite the Texans' insistence that he will still be here, he has been steadfast in his demand. Has he moved since? Deshaun watch. Um, he's still there, to be fair. He is still there. Lawsuits? Oh, whoa, shit. God damn, he does that. for a trade. But now there's a new wrinkle in this drama. A local lawyer oh. has filed allegations yeah, yeah. of sexual assault on the quarterback. The whole thing seems kind of sketchy. The lawyer talked more about himself in the beginning, and he lives on the same street as Cal McNair. Then again, several dozen women accusing him of this? When there's smoke, there's a potential for fire. The succubus demands more for the blood cost. I know the Mark Ingrams and Christian Kirksey's you want, you can't avoid it. Is this a good time to mention that J.J. Watt has been cut yet? The Colts had a huge void coming into the oh, offseason. Once again, it's a quarterback. Philip Rivers is retired him, and they'll need another option to replace his production. For them, they chose a gambling path. Carson Wentz has been broken by a combination of the team around him and his own stubbornness. When he was at his best, it was with the guidance of Frank Reich. A change of scenery is best for his future. And Indianapolis knew it. A deal was struck. Wentz will be donning the horseshoe for at least the next year. It's an interesting acquisition, as we all know what the upside could be if he's revived. If he can't, they just cut him the next year. It's very low risk from the Colts' perspective, yeah, but time is still precious for them. There's a chance D.Y. Hilton might be back, but that recently drafted core is only cheap for so long. Jacksonville, like the Jets, have plenty of cap space to work with. Oh, this Jacksonville, let's see what they do. If anything is their catnip, it's been free agency. They've spent significant money in this domain over the past 10 years to mostly negative results. Under the new regime, they're hoping this isn't the case. Most of the moves have been smaller buys, but there have been some bigger catches for them. Shaquille Griffin from the Seahawks? This is honestly oh, a surprising acquisition, especially considering that they may be another year or two from truly competing. Rayshon Jenkins and Malcolm Brown brought in for the defense as well. And that's to go with a Marvin Jones as a pass-catching target for a certain quarterback that will be drafted in a month's time. I think we know who that might be. Although we've been surprised before. I'm honestly torn on what the Titans are doing this year. I know they needed to make some changes considering their disappointing end of the season, but is this direction really the shift they needed? A lot of the old pieces are gone. Dennis Kelly and Adoree Jackson got cut, which is more cap casualty than anything. They are desperate to fix the woeful pass rush. And the hope is that Bud Dupree can help there in spades. The Titans paid a premium for his services, but he'll have to be the guy instead of getting help from T.J. Watt. <laughs> At corner, it's the veteran Janoris Jenkins taking over. He was the de facto whipping boy on the Saints' defense. Use that information how you will. The real issue, though, is in last year's first-round pick, Isaiah Wilson. Dude is straight up pissing away a career in the NFL. Expected to replace Jack Conklin on the line, he played a grand total of four snaps last season. As a first-round pick. His immaturity and lack of professionalism throughout the year had the team call him out on it. And by that point, it was too late. He wrote that he was done with the Titans. And then he got shipped off to the Dolphins for a seventh round pick swap. You'd think what? Miami would be able to rehabilitate him, but he responded by showing up hours late to his physical and no showing workouts he promised to be at. He doesn't want the help right now. Isaiah was promptly cut. And it may be his last chance at the NFL barring a miraculous- Bruh. <laughs> That's just, that's just, it's kind of sad because he's probably got comfortable because he's got money. And I don't even know, maybe he's got personal issues, I don't know. But like, bro, you've just turned down an opportunity of a lifetime, not turned down, you've just ruined an opportunity of a lifetime that so many, min like so many millions of people would love to be in that position. And he's got there and he's just like, I guess he just maybe just, he got to that point and he just thought, okay, I can take it easy now. Nah, man, that's we got to take it as hard as possible. But this is, 
I guess this is just a sort of a one story of many that usually happen when it comes to that first round picks or just drafting in general when you make it to the um, NFL, man. It's, it sucks. Turn but. around. Nothing is sadder to me than wasted talent. And Isaiah Wilson is a textbook case. I don't know what it is, but dude needs to get his shit together. For his own sake. Denver is in a state of flux. They have been linked to both Deshaun Watson teams. and Russell Wilson. Many questions linger about the long-term future of Drew Locke in this franchise. Either way, the current solution to their woes? Bolstering the defense. Ronald Darby and Kyle Fuller for the secondary. Justin Simmons re-signed to a hefty contract. Oh, Von shit. Miller, despite the allegations against him, back in the saddle. Shelby Harris and Kareem Jackson back as well, not bad. The hope is that Bears West will eventually be able to overthrow Kansas City. Yeah, it's probably a long shot, but with the issues they're starting to face on offensive line, it might be feasible for some pot shots. Eric Fisher and Mitchell Schwartz dealt with injuries throughout the year and are now unemployed due to the dreaded salary cap. They did get some pieces in, however. Joe Tooney from New England to solidify guard. And Kyle Long back from retirement for a chance at the long evasive Super Bowl ring. Will it work? I don't know. I wonder how they'll deal with the void they tackle, but there's still time there. I'm st Pass rush welcome Yannick Ngakwe and Solomon Thomas. Which can't hurt, unless they flop like last year's signings. John Brown and Kenyon Drake to add weapons for Derek Carr, not bad either. Marcus Mariota's back as an insurance option. My question though is in what they're doing with the offensive line. I get that Rodney Hudson and Gabe Jackson are aging, but to just let them go for a few mid-round picks? Hudson is still one of the most underrated linemen in the game. I don't get it. At all. Although with the Raiders, I guess they've never done things from a conventional standpoint, so eh. And at last we get to the Chargers. Their goal is to protect the future of the franchise. They know who that is. Mike Pouncey, like his twin brother, has retired to past year. They have holes they need to fill on the line. And they splurged on a premium piece. Corey Lindsley, the prize center of the free agent class. He was paid handsomely. And should be an upgrade over what was there. At guard, the underrated Matt Filer steps in. It comes at the cost of letting go of a handful of old veterans, but the future is now for the Chargers. Farewell, boys. We'll see you at the draft. Let's consider this scenario. You're out and about in life, going about your day, but then the urge comes along. You need to go to the bathroom. The situation is critical. Oh, so you rush to the nearest stall and take a glorious dump. Where am I going with this? Secure yourself and protect your privacy in a bathroom. So why aren't you doing so with your information on the internet? I have good news on this front. He's getting his money, man. Express VPN, you know, is links in the description if you're interested in that, man. I mean, he's probably a bit late now because this is like 20 days old. But I have him to get his money because his videos do get copyrighted. So it's good that he's getting his money, man. It makes me happy. There's one YouTuber I'd like to see getting their ad. It's, it's true, man. Um, I spent a season's worth of day, days of Steelers episodes. As we know, Big Ben isn't a fan of the word, no. <laughs> Fucking hell. 31 fan bases, the Patriots is finally dead, Bill Belichick. Oh, I'm afraid this team will be quite operational by the time week one arrive. I'm assuming the Patriots are like, they've built, like they've, they've done some big, big moves for the coming season, man. From what he said and from the comments of Sam as well. Days of, days of our Steelers, deep episodes should be coming soon. <laughs> the word sports ball is just so beautiful. <laughs> Why is Mike Brown still alive? Bengals Nation asked that question too, friend. AFC East saw the West and were like, I bet. <laughs> I never tired of the Texans music. Only only guy on YouTube I instantly click every time. It's nice to see Monday Night Football back on ABC. I was wondering when Disney was going to push for it since both ESPN and ABC are owned by Disney. Really? But Disney is huge, man. How are Disney so big? Oh, I need to see this. What companies do Disney... I gotta see this man, because ESPN and ABC are huge. Marvel. I've got to see. I want to see some UK brands in my own. I don't know if they do, but ABC, ESPN, Touchstone Pictures, Marvel, Lucasfilm, A and E, The History Channel, Lifetime, Pixar, Hollywood Records, Vice Media, Star Wars. You know all this kind of stuff. I thought it was gonna be like a map of. I'm gonna see what. If there is any, I want to see. Maybe they don't even own any. I, I don't even know why I care about this so much. <laughs> I don't know why I care. <laughs> Fuck you, why am I even looking at this? 
But yeah, but last time I was in Zelly, Josh Rosen was supposed to be a franchise quarterback. But hopefully you enjoyed this one, man. Again, I love doing these tree reactions and I mean, yeah, it's updating me for the coming season. I mean, yeah, hopefully you enjoyed. Until next time, like, subscribe.